Hey guys, this is Eric from Invensys, and I welcome you to our YouTube channel. In today's session, we will understand what risk management is in detail. Before we start, let us quickly go through the agenda. To begin with, we will understand why we need risk management in project planning. We will also understand what risk management is and its role in project management. Then we will discuss various success factors for risk management. Finally, we will conclude this session by discussing the various project risk management processes. If you like this video, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, to learn more about project management and its practices, check out Invensys Learning's Project Management Certification Training on PRINCE2, Project Management Fundamentals, PO, and MSP. All of the necessary information, CAP, on is given in the description box below. Now, let's get started with the first topic of today's session, why do we need to manage risks? Various projects, organizations, and situations will require different approaches to project risk management. In particular, risk management is a discipline that contains a series of processes to apply to both large and small projects. Therefore, risk management will be effective if its practice is tailored to the project and congruent with the organizational culture, processes, and assets. So what does effective risk management allow you to do? It helps in identifying your project's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. If you prepare for unexpected events to occur beforehand, you can take the required action accordingly. If you want to ensure your project's success, it is important to handle potential risks. Also, to ensure your project's success, define how you will handle potential risks. Project managers can be successful if they prioritize risk management. Achieving a project's goals depends on various factors such as planning, preparation, results, and evaluation that contribute to achieving strategic goals. Now that we know why we need to manage risks let us understand what risk management is in detail. If we have to define project risk management, project risk management includes the processes concerned with conducting risk management planning, identification, analysis, responses, and monitoring and control on a project. The main objective of risk management is to create a positive impact on events. In summary, Project risk management aims to identify and prioritize risks in advance of their occurrence and provide action-oriented information to project managers and other important people involved in it. This situation requires possible events that may or may not occur and are therefore described in terms of probability of occurrence. Now let us understand the role of risk management in project management. Many of us must be wondering if risk management is an optional activity. It is not. Risk management should be applied to all projects, and this is why it must be included in every stage of project plans and documentation. This way, it can become an integral part of every aspect of project management. Many of the project management processes address and work on planning the design of the project and of attaining goods or services through daily management of execution. Unfortunately, these processes often assume an unrealistic degree of certainty about the project and, therefore, they need to include treatment of project risks. This is where risk management comes into the picture. It addresses the uncertainty in project estimates and assumptions. Therefore, it builds upon and extends other project management processes. For example, a project schedule provides dates and critical paths based on activity durations and resource availability assumed to be known with certainty. The solution to possible risks is quantitative risk analysis. It understands the uncertainty in the estimated issue, and it can provide alternative paths that are more doable given the risks to the project. It must be clear that project risk management is not a substitute for other project management processes. Instead, it requires that these project management processes, such as scheduling, budgeting, change management, etc., be performed at the level of the best practices available. Risk management. Risk management adds the perspective of project risk to the outputs of those other processes and adds to their value by taking risk into account. For example, Risk management provides the basis for estimating the amount of cost and schedule contingency reserves needed to cover risk response actions to a required level of confidence for meeting project objectives. In some situations, there is a paradox about project risk that affects projects. In the initial stages of a project, risk exposure is at its maximum, but information on the project risks is at a minimum. This scenario does not mean that a project should not go forward because little is known at that time. Rather, there may be various ways of approaching the project that has other risk implications. The more this situation is analyzed, the more practical the project plan's results will be. We must make sure that a risk management approach is applied throughout a project's life cycle. 
The earlier in the project life cycle that the risks are recognized, the more realistic the project plans and expectations of results will be. Risk management continues to add value as project planning progresses, and more information becomes available about all aspects and components of the project and its environments, such as stakeholders, scope, time, cost, and corresponding assumptions and constraints. Therefore, the balance between project flexibility and knowledge about project risk needs to be reviewed regularly and optimized as the plans develop. During project execution, risk management processes monitor the changes the project undergoes for new risks that may emerge so that appropriate responses to them can be developed and check for existing risks that are no longer plausible. Project risk management plays a role in providing realistic expectations for the completion dates and cost of the project even if there are few options for changing the future. Finally, throughout the project and during project closure, risk-related lessons are reviewed to contribute to organizational learning and support continuous improvement of project risk management practice. These practices can then be applied to other relatable or upcoming projects. Let us now discuss the six factors that determine the success of risk management. Firstly, it is important to recognize the value of risk management. It should be recognized as an extremely valuable discipline that provides a very positive potential return on investment for organizational management, both internal and external project stakeholders, team members, and project management. The next factor is individual commitment or responsibility. Here, project participants and stakeholders should fully accept responsibility for undertaking risk-related activities whenever required. Risk management is not one person's responsibility. There must also be open and honest communication. Everyone in the team should be able to discuss the project risk management process. Actions or issues that hinder communication about project risk reduce the effectiveness of project risk management in several terms, such as proactive approaches and effective decision-making. Also, organizational commitment is another important factor to determine the success of risk management. This can be established if risk management is aligned with the organization's goal. Project risk management may sometimes be supported only from the upper management than other project management disciplines because some of the risks will require undivided attention. We also have a risk effort scale to project. Various activities of project risk management should align with the value of the project to the organization. In short, the cost of project risk management should be appropriate to its potential value to the project and the organization. Finally, we have integration with project management. It is extremely important to realize that project risk management is not separate or isolated from other project management processes. Successful project risk management requires the correct execution of the other project management processes. Let's move to the next part of today's session and talk about the various project management processes. The first process that we have on the list today is plan risk management. The main objective of the plan risk management process is to develop the overall risk management strategy. Here, you will decide how the processes will be executed and integrate them with all other project management activities. Effective risk management requires the creation of a risk management plan. This plan describes how the risk management processes should be executed and how they fit in with the other processes. On a broader level, it describes the relationships among project risk management, general project management, and the organization's management processes. To provide the best benefit, initial risk management planning should be carried out early in the project's overall planning. Also, it is important that the risk management activities must be integrated into the overall project management plan. The risk management plan may need to be adapted as the needs of the project and stakeholders change or become clear over time. To ensure your project's success, it is important to define how you will handle risk to identify, mitigate, or avoid problems when required. There are two main categories of success criteria for risk management. The first category is for those who want to see their project succeed in general, and the second category is for those who want to succeed in their project risk management. We will discuss each of these categories in detail. The first one is called project-related criteria. To assess the success of project risk management, the stakeholders must agree on an acceptable level of results of the project-related criteria such as cost, time, and scope. To achieve this kind of consistency among stakeholders, the risk management plan must present objectives regarding the project definition documents. To guide risk management, particularly in prioritizing risk responses, stakeholders should also prioritize each project objective. Next, we have process-related criteria. We have already discussed several factors that measure success in project risk management. For example, 
The project risk management process for a research project needs to address more unforeseen changes than a project with a more predictable environment. Therefore, a research project risk management process may be considered a success even if it results in more variance from the baseline than would be allowable for a successful process in a more predictable project. Now let's move ahead and discuss the various tools and techniques for the plan risk management process. The first technique is to plan sessions. It is recommended to build a mutual understanding of the project's risk approach between stakeholders. It is also to gain agreement on the techniques to be used for managing risk. If we elaborate the risk management plan, it will develop an effective means for the team to work together. A similar approach will be used in the upcoming stages of the risk management process. The participants must include the project manager, at least a few project team members, and other stakeholders, and the broader project team members responsible for risk. Initially, risk responsibilities, methodology, templates, definitions, timelines, and costs for the other project risk management processes should be selected and accepted. Tools that are used in upcoming processes will include all resources to ensure their applicability to the project. All the information must be documented in the risk management plan, and when it is approved, it will be the principal deliverable of this process. For the next tool, we have templates. To benefit from the existing practices, risk management planning should consider relevant templates or resources, like risk status reports, risk breakdown structures, or the risk register. Project managers should make a decision as to which resources are relevant to the project. These resources should then be adapted and included in the risk management plan. In the next part of today's session, we will talk about documenting the results of the plan risk management process. The results of risk management planning are documented in the risk management plan itself. Now let us understand what the plan serves to do. It provides all project stakeholders with an agreeable view of how the risk-related activities of the project will be handled, what has been agreed upon, and a description of the stakeholders' involvement and the various responsibilities in each of these activities. The key areas of focus are given on the screen. Depending upon the project elements, like introduction, project description, risk management methodology, risk management organization, criteria for success, templates, communications plan, stakeholder risk tolerance, etc., can be present in a risk management plan. Now, let's move on to the second risk management process, identify risks. Firstly, let us take a look at its objectives. The main reason for risk identification is to identify risks to the maximum implementation extent. Some risks are unknowable. They require the identify risk process to be iterative. So you can repeat the identify risks process to find new risks that can occur over time. This process should be recorded and considered for appropriate action. Where such responses are not implemented immediately, these should be considered during the plan risk responses process. A vast number of tools and techniques are available for risk identification. These fall into the following three categories, namely, past, present and future. Firstly, we have historical reviews. They are based on what occurred in the past, either in this project, similar projects in the same company, or similar projects in other companies. Historical review approaches depend on the selection of similar situations to the current project. You can also filter data accordingly to ensure that only relevant previous risks are considered. Secondly, we have current assessments. They rely on detailed consideration of the current project, analyzing its characteristics against given models to expose areas of uncertainty. Current assessment techniques do not depend on outside information but are based purely on the examination of the project. Finally, we have creativity techniques. A copious range of creative techniques can be used for risk identification, encouraging project stakeholders to use their imagination and experience to find risks that might affect the project. The outcomes of these techniques depend on the ability of participants to think creatively or out of the box. The techniques used can either be single or in groups and also employ varying degrees of structure. Again, they mainly depend on the ability of participants to think creatively, and their success is enhanced by the use of a skilled facilitator. Now we will discuss documenting the results of the identify risks process. It is important to record the identify risks process results to capture all relevant information currently available for each identified risk. The only output from the identify risks process is the risk register. So, what is the risk register? It includes a properly structured risk description and the nominated risk owner for each risk. It may also include information on the causes and effects of the risk, trigger conditions, and preliminary responses. The next process is, perform qualitative risk analysis. 
This process assesses and evaluates characteristics of individually identified project risks and prioritizes risks based on agreed-upon characteristics. If we assess risks individually using qualitative risk analysis, there are two advantages. Firstly, we will evaluate the probability of each risk that can occur. Secondly, we will also evaluate the effects of each risk on the project and its goals. But it does not address the combined effect of all the risks to the project. On the other hand, the tools and techniques that assess individual risks will focus or identify the ones that will directly have a huge negative impact on the project. The process is illustrated in the figure given on the screen. To begin with, you have to select risk characteristics that define risk importance. These tools provide a way to recognize risks that are important for analysis from those that are less important. Output from such tools can be a listing of risks according to their priority order. In the next step, we have to collect data and analyze it. Individual risks that are to be assessed are based on information collected. Therefore, data collection and evaluation tools, including interviews, workshops, and references to databases of prior projects, require management support and attention. In addition, it is important to protect against bias in data gathering, which is important when relying on expert judgment. Then, we have to prioritize risks by probability and impact on specific objectives. Some tools allow distinguishing a risk's priority in terms of the affected goals of the project. This specification will provide a list of risks that are important for any specific objective that requires immediate attention. This is useful since it is common for risks to have uneven impacts on various project objectives. We will have to prioritize risks by probability and impact on the overall project. There are several reasons for measuring a specific risk's importance to the entire project as contrasted with its importance to specific objectives. A common reason is for ease of communication with management and other stakeholders. When a single risk prioritization index is needed, the organization should be explicit about how that index is created. Usually, the index reflects the organization's preference among objectives. The method used to create the risk priority measure should be well documented in the plan risk management process. In the next step, categorize risk causes. Categorizing risks may lead to improved analysis of the probability and magnitude of project risk and effective responses. Do not neglect the relationships between risks. It may provide a better understanding of the possibility and magnitude of project risk than if risks are only considered separate and independent events. If we can identify the common causes of a set of risks, it may reveal both the magnitude of the risk event for that particular group along with strategies that might address many risks. Alternatively, some risks may be linked with others in a causal chain, and understanding the chain of risks may lead to a better understanding of the implication of risk for the project. It is a safer option to identify risks that can occur at a certain time, or using resources might also provide a realistic picture of the current scenario. Finally, we have to document the results of the performed qualitative risk analysis process. This process adds a basic structure to a list of undifferentiated risks in terms of priority. In short, each risk that has been laid out is assigned a priority, either by objective or for the entire project. All of this information will be stored within a risk register which is updated regularly. The risk register obtains this list of prioritized risks, which is presented to the project manager or other people that are involved in the project to prepare solutions. Risks that are highly prioritized are segregated for further analysis and response planning and are monitored frequently. On the other hand, Risks of low priority may be placed on a watch list and reviewed less often for any change. The next process is to perform quantitative risk analysis. This process provides a numerical estimate of the overall effect of risk on the project's objectives based on current plans. Results from this analysis can be used to evaluate the chances of success in achieving project objectives. Also, you can estimate contingency reserves, usually for time and cost, appropriate to both the risks and the risk tolerance of project stakeholders. Estimating overall project risk using quantitative methods helps distinguish those projects where quantified risks threaten objectives beyond the tolerance of the stakeholders from those for which the objectives are within acceptable tolerances even when risk is considered. The former may be targeted for vigorous risk responses to protect those most important objectives to the stakeholders. Now let us talk about the tools and techniques for the perform quantitative risk analysis process. Although tools and techniques used appropriately for quantitative risk analysis have several characteristics, we will discuss each in detail. Firstly, we have comprehensive risk representation. Risk models permit representation of most of the risks that have an impact on an objective simultaneously. They also represent opportunities and threats to the project's objectives. The second characteristic is risk impact calculation. 
Quantitative models facilitate the calculation of the effective risks, which are identified and quantified at a level of detail below the total project, that is, on the project objectives. The third characteristic is the quantitative method appropriate to analyzing uncertainty. For instance, probability models use a quantitative method that addresses uncertainty. Specifically, the method should handle how uncertainty is represented. Also, we have data gathering tools. These tools used in this process include assessment of historical data and workshops, interviews, or questionnaires to gather quantified information, for instance, on the probability of a risk occurring, a probability distribution of its potential impacts on resources such as cost or time, and even relationships such as the correlation between risks. There must also be an effective presentation of quantitative analysis results. Results from the quantitative tools are usually not obtainable in standard deterministic project management methods. The next characteristic is quantitative risk analysis. The success of the process is improved if used regularly throughout the project. It is quite an impossible task to know all of the risks that may occur in a project beforehand. Therefore, often quantitative risk analysis should be repeated as the project proceeds. The frequency of this effort will be determined during the plan risk management process, but it will also depend on events that occur within the project. The last characteristic is information for response planning. The project contingency reserve should be reflected in the project schedule and budget. And this is where quantitative risk analysis comes to the rescue. It provides information that may be used to modify the project plan. If the overall risk to time and cost indicates that a scope adjustment is needed, the scope changes are agreed upon and documented. A new quantitative risk analysis is carried out to reflect the new aspects of the project. Let us now talk about documenting the results of the performed quantitative risk analysis process. The contingency reserves calculated are incorporated into the cost estimate and schedule to establish a target and realistic project expectations. Contingency reserves may also be established to capture opportunities that are judged to be priorities for the project. There can be situations where the contingency reserve required exceeds the time or resources, and there may be changes in the scope and plan of the project itself. Also, the analysis results may provide more or less urgency to risk response depending on the probability of achieving the plan's objectives or the amount of contingency reserve required to provide the necessary level of confidence. Finally, the quantitative risk analysis results are recorded. It can then be passed to the people responsible for managing the project for any further actions required of these results. In the next process, we have to plan risk responses. This determines effective response actions that are appropriate to the priority of the individual risks and the overall project risk. It takes into consideration the stakeholders' risk attitudes and the conventions specified in the risk management plan, along with any constraints and assumptions that were determined when the risks were identified and analyzed. Let us talk about the objectives of the plan risk responses process. You can determine the set of actions that enhance the chances of project success with project constraints. Once risks have been identified, Plans should be developed for addressing every risk the project team considers to be essential. The planning involves agreeing upon the actions to be taken and the potential changes to elements like the budget, schedule, resources, and scope which these actions might cause. There are four different categories of tools and techniques for the plan risk responses process. We have creativity tools to identify potential responses, decision support tools for determining the optimal potential response, strategy implementation techniques, and tools to transfer control to the monitor and control risks process. These categories of tools can be used to identify potential responses, select the most appropriate response, translate strategy into planning, and assign the corresponding actions. Let us talk about documenting the results of the plan risk responses process. Risk response planning is based on the information placed in the risk register. You can add risk responses to the risk register. The response-related information for each risk is recorded and updated regularly in the risk register. Any stakeholder should be able to access any of the information to manage their responsibilities and risks under the risk response plan. Also, the set of residual risks and their priorities are identified and recorded. You can also add corresponding risk responses to the project management plan. While developing a set of risk responses, the project-related implications are evaluated for inclusion in a modified project management plan. These include costs, resource assignments, scheduling details, and changes to project documentation. Until these changes are formally approved and the additional risks that they may carry, risk response planning cannot be considered complete. It is also important to review and document predicted exposure. Once the risk responses have been defined and integrated into the project management plan, 
The individual and overall residual risks related to this plan are evaluated to determine whether additional response planning is required. This evaluation should estimate both the expected post-response situation and the potential improvement of the risk exposure, assuming that the proposed responses are effective. In short, all of the evaluations should be documented. The last process is to monitor and control risks. The effectiveness of project risk management depends upon the way the approved plans are carried out. Plans should be executed correctly, reviewed, and updated regularly. If this procedure is carried out in an orderly fashion, the invested effort will be rewarded, and future projects will benefit from this project's experience. Let us talk about the primary objectives of risk monitoring and controlling. Firstly, it is important to track pre-evaluated risks, monitor residual risks, and identify new risks. Also, you must ensure that risk response plans are executed at the relevant time and evaluate their effectiveness throughout the project life cycle. In addition to tracking and managing the risk response actions, the effectiveness of all of the project risk management processes should be reviewed to improve the management of the current project and future ones. Risk monitoring and controlling requires a set of tools which will support its success factors for tracking all kinds of risks. Firstly, we have to manage contingency reserves. Reserves may be allocated to cover time and cost-related risks. Techniques that allow the project manager to assess the project at any point of time is required for the success of the project. Moving on, you can track trigger conditions and its metrics defined during the plan risk responses process. Various tools and techniques are required to evaluate and track conditions against the project threshold. Tools can provide information on risks related to the deliverables, such as performance, as well as on project-related features, such as time and cost. We will also require tools to determine the progress of the project. Certain tools check if necessary actions have the expected effect on the project's overall level of risk. Finally, we have tracking compliance. In order to monitor the quality of the execution of the risk-related plans, a set of quality metrics should be recorded. These metrics will be normally defined in the risk management plan. To conclude this session, let us talk about documenting the results of the monitor and control risks process. The final action of risk monitoring and controlling is to record present data for future use. This includes information relating to risk management from beginning to end of the project. The goal is to ensure that the risk management information is recorded to provide appropriate data. That's it, folks. With this, we have reached the end of today's session on what is risk management. If this has spiked your interest and you want to know more about project management, I recommend you to opt for PMP certification training and clear the exam. At Invensys Learning, we provide various PMP certifications that will pave the way for your career in project management. For each of these certifications, we are accredited by respective governing bodies or courses in line with their guidelines. Post-enrollment, you will get lifetime access to a personalized learning management system. LMS has all the class recordings, live class, webinar links along with assignments and case studies to practice. All classes are live instructor-led delivered by trainers with rich domain experience. Thank you guys. See you in the next session.